This video contains disturbing content, violent content, and strong language. Viewer discretion advised. When it comes to satisfying our natural fondness for violence, video games certainly haven't done a shoddy job. Guns are one of the prime reasons we even play games at all. In games today, guns either fire bullets or lasers or are normally split into classes such as assault rifle, machine gun, sniper, and pistol, each with their own unique firepower and each designed for a certain situation. Given the countless awe-inspiring guns we've had the pleasure of using over the course of video game history, choosing a top 10 is of course no simple task. We decided to look beyond the guns that are mediocre and instead sought to find the arsenal that either boast creative ways of torturing their targets, have legendary histories, or are simply ridiculously fun to use. So grab that ammo, reload that gun, and let's take a look at the top 150 guns in game. Ice Beam from Metroid In the original Metroid, Samus was able to choose between the Wave Beam and the Ice Beam, but was unable to defeat Metroids without the latter. When equipped with the Ice Beam, a single shot from Samus' Beam will freeze most basic enemies. Another shot from the Ice Beam will unfreeze them. While frozen, Samus can stand on the enemies and use them as platforms. If left alone long enough, the enemies will unfreeze and continue moving. Up to three Ice Beams can be fired on the screen at one time, this is a vital weapon to Samus because Metroids are extremely susceptible to cold. The Ice Beam is also used to stop enemies in their tracks and safely pass by them without conflict. Laser Metal Slug 2 The laser first made its appearance in Metal Slug 2 and emits a thin stream of highly concentrated energy in the form of lights. These lights have so much energy concentrated into such a small area that the focal point is powerful enough to cut through tank armor and decimate enemies. Although the weapon itself is very powerful, the rate of energy consumption is very high, resulting in quick ammo depletion. It does have its drawbacks, since it can only be fired in primary directions. The laser is classed as one of the best weapons in the game, however, ammo for it is very rare. Mega Buster from Mega Man 2 The original Mega Buster called P, or known as the Arm Cannon, is Mega Man's main weapon used in Mega Man 2. The Mega Buster is an ambidextrous arm cannon created by Dr. Light. It can fire three bullets of highly compressed solar energy. The attacks are fast and the player does not need to reload the weapon. The Mega Buster is an all-round weapon and can easily be used to defeat certain bosses. Some enemies are immune to the Mega Buster. But from Mega Man Toon onwards, the Mega Buster has been upgraded to provide Mega Man with more damage and a charged shot. Barn Blaster Earthworm Jim 2 The Barn Blaster is a gun in Earthworm Jim 2. It's a large brick gun that destroys all enemies on the screen, but packs a nasty recoil. Jim is knocked to the ground momentarily after each use. The gun is ultra rare, so you'll only find it in hard to reach places. The Area 51 Gun Dead Trigger 2 The Area 51 Gun is an exotic weapon in Dead Trigger 2, released in the 0.6.0 .0 update. It can only be obtained by buying the Area 51 pack. This weapon has a very unique way of killing zombies. When the bullet hits a zombie, the zombie freezes while it's walking and starts decomposing with a blue lining. Contrary to the description, while it can easily kill zombies in one hit at close range, it becomes progressively useless in higher ranks, as this weapon may take a couple or even the full clip to kill stronger zombies. The range of this weapon greatly reduces its effectiveness at higher levels as well. And due to this weapon's low fire rate, it's not advised to use this weapon in tight corners. 
It has an average reload time for a powerful pistol, but its magazine size is just far too small. Spread Gun Contra The spread gun is a particular favorite of many players. While the bullets it shoots aren't any stronger than that of a normal gun, the spread effect of the gun allows players to remove many threats simultaneously. The spread gun is able to shoot in five different directions and is often regarded as the best weapon in Contra. Because the bullets travel outward as they progress, this gun requires substantially less aim to cause a lot of destruction. However, be prepared to fire quite rapidly at strong enemies, since it lacks the power of the laser or fireball gun. The Plasma Wilder. The sun clean up detail. Generally not considered a weapon against enemies, it is however a very important and unique gun in the sort of clean up detail. The Plasma Wilder, unlike other tools such as the Moth or Smither, is not given to the player at the start of a level. The Laser Wilder can only be utilized by picking up the gun with the hands and deactivated by dropping the gun. The main purpose of the Plasma Wilder is to remove bullet holes from a level. However, you may also attempt to use the Plasma Welder to partly incinerate large body parts or other debris that may be located far from any incinerator. Doing so will produce small black or red crisps that will not produce any kind of mess when dropped. The Plasma Welder will overheat and begin to create large amounts of soot. Because of this, it is recommended that the Plasma Welder be used in short successive bursts instead of a continuous manner. The Electro Gun Grand Theft Auto 2 The Electro Gun is a fictional weapon in Grand Theft Auto 2. It's mainly based off of a taser gun, but there are a few differences. The main one being is that this fires thunder and electricity out of the gun. It's useful against a small mob as the gun fires everywhere forward and causes great damage. Surprisingly, the Electro Gun is actually weak in damaging vehicles. Unusually, the player must continue to fire the gun at a target for two seconds to eliminate them, or they will escape completely unharmed. The Electro Gun automatically aims for everyone in front of the player, and may actually hit several targets at once. The charge can also jump between targets, increasing its effective range. The Electro Gun is even capable of killing someone with invulnerability. A point to note, though, is that several NPCs killed with an electro gun will not leave their weapon behind. LAZ Device Chex Quest The LAZ Device stands for Large Area Zorching Device, and it uses a phasing Zorch recharge to wipe out all the Flemoids in a single blow. The gun is reminiscent of Doom's BFG, however, unlike the Zorch Propulsor, it does not expose you to the Flemoid Dimension unless a gateway is opened. The LAZ device is a rare weapon and is found in secret areas much later into the game. Charged Cannon, Killer is Dead The Charged Cannon is a devastating weapon and its rough power has no equals. For this reason, it's the best weapon to use against every minor enemy and even sometimes bosses. The Charged Cannon must be charged. Wait for the indicator to show a full charge, then let go of the button to unleash a blast that will stun the enemy and take off a great deal of damage. When this gun mode is at full level, it can take off some major damage, which makes it extremely useful for the tougher enemies found later in the game. The Charge Cannon is acquired after completing the second Gigolo mission with Natalia. M1 Garand, Medal of Honor Frontline. 
The M1 Garand is an American-made service rifle found in Medal of Honor Frontline. It is a starting rifle for the missions D-Day and a storm in the port. It has good accuracy and power, although its rate of fire is rather low. The only downside is that it's unable to be reloaded mid-clip due to the game engine only allowing one reload animation per weapon. The M1 Garand is a love-or-hate weapon in Frontline. Some people might argue that it's too slow when compared to the Thompson. Others believe it's an ideal mix of accuracy and speed. The Garand is more than capable of taking out enemies with a single shot to the torso. Because the rifle is unscoped, players will be forced to focus their aim a bit more than they would with a sniper rifle. On the plus side, it can handle itself quite well in close quarters when necessary. Mega Shark Gun Terraria the Mega Shark is a ranged weapon that was added in the 1.1 patch. It's crafted out of the Mini Shark, illegal gun parts, 20 souls of might, and 5 shark fins. It deals 23 base damage per hit and has a 50% chance to not consume ammo. Due to its stats, it's easily one of the best ranged weapons in Terraria especially with its best prefix and ammo tailored to specific combat situations like crystal bullets and cursed bullets. The Mega Shark is well known as an extremely powerful weapon due to its incredibly high damage per second. It can use any bullet, however expensive bullet usage is recommended for non-general situations as the Mega Shark consumes ammo at an incredible rate. Due to the fact that it has 23 base damage, it has the same base damage as the Phoenix Blaster and the Musket. Plunger Gun Rayman Raving Rabbits Plunger Guns are the main weapons in Rayman Raving Rabbits and Rayman Raving Rabbits 2. They shoot 5 rounds before being reloaded. They are used by the Rabbids and Rayman himself. There are special power-ups that you can get for the plunger guns. They are used in the Shooting Trials games. A real version of the plunger gun has been produced for use in the games for Nintendo Wii. The Gal Gun in Gal Gun the Gal Gun is a weapon used by the player to shoot pheromone shots at advancing girls, making them drop to the floor in dizzy ecstasy while trying to cultivate a romance with one of the four main female leads. The plot of this Japanese game is that one of the Cupid arrows accidentally misfires and hits the protagonist, making them irresistible to the opposite sex, transforming them into the most popular boy in the school for one day. Galgon also has a panic button that switches the action for a retro looking game with authentic animations and sounds. This is referred to as a Mama Kita Gammon or Mom Arrived screen. Stasis Rifle Subnautica When the right mouse button is held down, the stasis rifle barrel will rotate and fire off a large spherical particle effect. When the right mouse button is released, or when the channel indicator on the stasis rifle reaches to the full level, the player can also fire the stasis rifle instantly by simply clicking the right mouse button. Anything that is inside the bubble will be frozen in place for a certain amount of time depending on how long you charge a shot. Charging the stasis rifle for a longer period of time will result in more energy being consumed, a larger orb size, and longer time before the orb collapses. Firing the stasis rifle without charging it uses less than 1% of its total energy per shot. Fully charged shots use up 5%. The stasis rifle can be reloaded with a battery. Uncharged stasis rifle shots will result in orbs that have a diameter of 5 meters, while fully charged stasis rifles will create orbs with a diameter of 20 meters. MA-22 Rocket Launcher from Darkest of Days 
The MA-22 is a deadly, futuristic rocket launcher that launches a stream of rockets from the sky that the player can laser guide with the crosshair. The MA-22 handles very much like a javelin and is ideal for taking on multiple enemies on the battlefield. It's very strange for your allies and enemies not to be completely baffled at the weapons you're using considering the post-time era. Nevertheless, the gun itself is a definite league of its own in this game, which is why it's concluded on this list. Annelid Launcher from System Shock 2 The Annelid Launcher is the final exotic weapon obtainable in System Shock 2. It's a heavily modified alien device and what its original purpose was remains a mystery. The Annelid Launcher fires a yellow heat-seeking projectile when the trigger is pulled. The worm projectile is telekinetically directed by the weapon and will try to home in on its target. The major advantage of this weapon is that its projectiles are heat-seeking and have a decent size of blast radius. It's basically the closest thing to a missile launcher in the game, and not much aiming is required. The firepower of an Anadid launcher will only exceed that of the grenade launcher when fighting against pure Anadid creatures, mainly consisting of arachnids. The human mode deals a large amount of extra damage to the player, and thus should never be used in close range. The Anadid mode, on the other hand, does not hurt the player. The Merlin Ion Cannon Renegade The Merlin Ion Cannon is a large energy weapon in Renegade. It's a shoulder-mounted, stout barrel weapon in an attempt by the GDI to harness their most destructive weapon and put it in a portable, mobile package. It's used exclusively by GDI in single-player and multiplayer, with devastating firepower capable of destroying tanks and infantry alike. It's extremely effective when used against tanks on foot, but can also be used against enemy soldiers as well. Its long reload times renders the user vulnerable if the target is not defeated. The Azure Stream is extremely destructive, especially when paired with other sophisticated equipment, such as the prototype Mobius suit. The Killer Whale Splatoon. The killer whale fires extremely large sound waves made of the player's ink color that are completely unobstructed by buildings and other obstacles. It does not spread any actual ink, but any opponents that are caught in the sound waves get splatted. Like all special weapons, the killer whale must be charged by splattering ink on the ground. Once charged, the player can click the right analog stick to utilize it and aim it where they want it to fire. When launched, a message with the player's image and the special used, in this case the killer whale, will appear on the right side of the screen for all of the teammates to see. Needler, Halo 2. The Needler is a Covenant projectile weapon that fires long, sharp, crystalline shards that are guided until they impale a target. Several seconds after coming to rest in their target, the needles detonate, creating severe and in most cases fatal wounds. When the trigger is pulled, the needle is fed from the top into the barrel of the weapon and fired at high speeds. If the trigger is held down, the rate at which the needles are fired increases. The more needle shards that impact a target, the higher degree of damage it will do to the target. Seven or more needle shards detonating at the same place will cause a massive explosion that will cause splash damage and cause shrapnel damage, which can also cause nearby explosives to detonate, giving the enemy another reason to run. The Needler is one of the most unusual weapons in the Covenant's arsenal, and the least understood. How the weapon functions remains a mystery to human military experts and scientists. Syringe Gun, Team Fortress 2 The syringe gun is the default primary weapon for the medic. It is an oddly shaped air-powered gun. Mounted on the top of the weapon is a transparent cylindrical case filled with syringes, from which the projectiles it fires are apparently derived. Syringes are fired out of the weapon at a rate of 10 syringes a second at the speed of 990 hammer units 
or 61.88 feet per second. The syringes follow an arced trajectory, making it necessary to lead a moving target and aim upwards to compensate for the distance. The name and weapon design are based on real-life syringe guns, which are used to inject needles into patients with more control than by hand, and are often air-powered. The LJ-10 Volley Jet Depth the LJ-10 Volley Jet simultaneously fires a ring of 10 9.4 mm lance jets which spread as they travel. While inaccurate at great ranges, the LJ-10 steel-tipped lance jets will tear through any shark in close quarters combat. On its own, the weapon is quite powerful, capable of killing even a great white in one shot, provided you land all the mini spears on direct contact. While it only seems useful up close, the weapon has a pretty decent range that you can make great use of for tagging. At $3,000, the gun may seem pricey, but the result is a weapon that you fire in close to medium quarters. The only drawback is that it needs to be reloaded every time it is fired. The Pimp Cane from Saints Row the Pimp Cane is a secret weapon and is a lever action 12 gauge shotgun in the form of a cane. While walking with this weapon equipped, the protagonist will use it as a cane and strut around. The Pimp Cane also appears to be the most powerful shotgun in the game and has made appearances in the later games as well. The gun holds 115 ammo with 16 rounds per magazine, has better damage than any other shotgun just over the Ultimax, causing cars to explode in 2-4 to four shots, but has the lowest rate of fire of all shotguns. The sound of the pimp cane is also unique too. The gun is unlocked by completing all snatch activities in the game. The Striker Shotgun, Max Payne 2. The Striker Shotgun is a fully automatic drum-fed shotgun, which can fire out huge blasts with a wide spray range. It has an automatic fire and can take out huge groups of enemies very quickly. The Striker is easily the best shotgun in the game, combining the spread of the sawed off with the consistency of the pump action, but with a greatly increased fire rate and damage. The Striker is the only shotgun to have a separate ammunition slot. It holds Striker ammo. However, it's almost never used by enemies, so ammo may become scarce. Air Propulsion Gun, Just Cause 2. The Air Propulsion Gun is a pressurized air cannon and sends anything it shot at flying into the air. Although it runs on air, it still has an ammunition capacity. This is most likely because it does not have the means to pressurize the air for it to work. The only way to refill ammunition is to buy the gun again at the black market. However, running empty is hard as the gun has a total of 600 bullets, but you will only need about 20 bullets to make a normal car fly into the air. As with all DLC weapons, it comes fully upgraded. The air propulsion gun might be an illusion to the Thunder Gun from the game Call of Duty Zombies. Chrono Shifter Gun, Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. The Chrono Shifter Gun is used by Chrono Legionnaire. This gun can erase enemies from history by freezing them in time as they methodically erase every trace of the unit from the time continuum. While being erased, targeted units are not present in any time stream and are therefore invulnerable to all weapons. With this gun, you can erase buildings and soldiers, making it appear to other enemies and players that their units simply disappeared. The only downside to this weapon is that you can only target one unit at a time. Their unique traits and abilities make them easily one of the quirkiest and most unusual units in the war, which really is saying something. UV Shotgun from Crackdown 2 
The UV shotgun is an ultraviolet boat based weapon in Crackdown 2, capable of throwing vehicles and humans into the air using a telekinetic shockwave. This weapon is also extremely effective against freaks, because the weapon was made to fight against them and can be used to destroy numerous freaks at once. The UV shotgun's powerful blast allows it to destroy any freak short of a goliath with just a couple blasts along with a mighty knockback that could potentially knock tougher freaks into other objects or more frankly into the sea. The UV shotgun's burst can take out wave after wave of freaks but does less damage to humans as it just blows them away. The UV shotgun also causes humans to burst into flames causing minor damage but it can be very useful for herding cell into manageable spots to be finished off by other means. Cafzeal, the Darkness 2. The Cafzeal is a special submachine gun during the Hell portion of the Darkness 2. They are wielded by the Hell minions and shoot darkness bullets. They look somewhat like the Hell minions as they look like flesh colored with colored energy pulsing inside of it. There are many different Hell guns in the level, such as the Kesef and the Mashi. It is a shame the guns were only used for one level, despite the uniqueness of them. Anal Probe Gun Destroy all humans The anal probe works by being charged and then fired at a human. A fully charged shot can send a civilian or a policeman running before their head explodes, allowing Crypto to collect the brain stems. Two fully charged shots are needed to take down a soldier, whereas three shots are needed to take down a majestic agent or a majestic mutant. It does not require ammo and is the only weapon that cannot be upgraded by Orthopox. This is the only anal probe that doesn't require ammo, but for immediate extraction, charging up is necessary. According to a sentence on Wikipedia, it describes the anal probe as a powerful rod that goes into the victim's rectum and uproots a DNA enriched brain. Double Tommy Guns from Time Splitters 2. The Double Tommy Guns has a sizable drum magazine and excels at putting large volumes of lead in the air, eliminating groups of enemies with ease and causing much general carnage. While not boasting the fastest rate of fire in the games in which it appears, it compensates with decent accuracy and good stopping power. The main fire mode of this weapon is continuous fire which increases a continuous and accurate stream of 9mm trace rounds, allowing the player to easily adjust for accuracy. Unfortunately, the Tommy Guns never made it into the third installment of Time Splitters. Bastard Gun, Metro 2033. The Bastard was one of the first Metro made weapons. It was considerably cheaper to make and maintain than other guns, needing relatively few parts to create, making it ideal for weaponsmiths with few resources. Despite being widely considered a low-grade piece of kit, the Bastard Gun is far from being a bad piece of weaponry. Quite the contrary, it's remarkably effective when used correctly. Using the gun carries several advantages. It's the first automatic gun players get that can be silenced. It's the first gun they get that can use military rounds. And with patience and practice, the gun can easily carry players through the entire game. The Bastard Gun has a high fire rate, and is quite accurate when fired in single shots or short bursts. The addition of a silencer does a lot to improve it. It's slightly more accurate with its attachment, with less recoil, and without reducing the gun's damage. The downside is that it has very poor accuracy when firing on full auto, and this is the only weapon which has a noticeable inaccuracy when aiming down the sights. The M41A-2 Pulse Rifle, Alien vs Predator. The M4A1-2 Pulse Rifle is the standard issue automatic rifle given to most USCM Marines. It has an assault rifle module and an underslung grenade launcher module. It has three fire modes. The primary mode fires the rifle. It also has a selective fire mode. It has a 99 round magazine with a rechargeable battery pack in the base to drive the electronic pulse ignition. The secondary mode fires the grenade launcher. 
It is a gas-operated pump action that fires a grenade shell. It is electronically primed. While boasting a high rate of fire, it isn't advisable to fire in full auto for prolonged battles, as the ammo will quickly get depleted. The grenade has a wide blast radius. This has been known to cause friendly fire incidents during close quarter combat. The Explosive Shotgun Grand Theft Auto The Ballad of the Gay Tony Modeled on the MPS AA-12, the Explosive Shotgun is capable of firing Frag-12 explosive rounds that can inflict heavy damage on vehicles. Regular vehicles can only survive two direct hits from an Explosive Shotgun before catching fire. The rounds have massive concussive force, easily denting vehicles. The automatic shotgun can kill an enemy in one shot up close or strike an enemy down from a distance. The explosive shotgun has range outclassing SMGs and will usually kill in just one shot, but occasionally it may require two shots, but never more. WSTE M5 Combat Shotguns from Marathon de Randall the WSTE M5 combat shotguns are dual-wielded, powerful, close-range weapons that fire two shotgun shells at a time and reload by using rin-like triggered guards to spin the guns. As with most shotguns though, the punch of the WSTE M5 is severely diminished over long range and due to the fact that it expends two shells of each firing, it's also incredibly easy to burn through ammo at a rapid rate. The design of the shotgun and its reloading ammunition seems to imply that it is both a lever action and a break action weapon. Nevertheless, the shotguns are extremely powerful and great for clearing enemies from rooms. Harpoon Gun Crackdown A semi-automatic, agency-only weapon, the Harpoon Gun only takes a magazine of 3 rounds with 30 rounds in reserve. Great stopping power, decent rate of fire, and excellent accuracy, almost sniper class with its scope and incredible range. Because it fires harpoons, this is a cool weapon that allows agents to impale targets and stick them to walls and vehicles, allowing users to show off their hunted prey. It is very powerful, but it does do little damage to vehicles and only holds 3 harpoons per clip and 33 in reserve. It can kill all enemies in the game in one shot, except for bosses. The weapon is humorous, yet in a humane way. The Boner Shadows of the Damned The Boner is a revolver wielded by demon hunter Garcia Hotspur and is a product of a transformation by Johnson, a demon that acts as a tool for Garcia to use. The boner gets its name from the demon bones that it fires. Its name is also meant to be a double entendre, if you couldn't guess. After defeating Sister Maris Grimm, Garcia earns a blue gem to be able to upgrade the boner with, into the hot boner. When Garcia obtains a card for Justine's hostess club, Angel Kiss, he can use a phone to turn Johnson into the big boner, a long, high-powered, impromptu sniper rifle. Blunderbuss, Red Dead Redemption, Undead Nightmare. The Blunderbuss is a weapon found exclusively in the Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare DLC pack. The Blunderbuss was typically viewed as a small, muzzle-loading shotgun. In-game, the gun uses pieces of zombies, ribs, eyes, ears, and a tongue collected from slain undead in place of traditional ammunition. When fired, the blunderbuss explodes zombies into pieces. It mutilates corpses horribly. The blunderbuss can have a maximum of 19 spare rounds and one loaded and it takes 10 of any undead body part to create one round. After the player completes the undead treasure hunter challenges, they will receive extra room for much more ammo for all weapon types, including the blunderbuss. Blunderbuss comes from the Dutch word donderbuss, which means thunder gun or thunder pipe.
Death Penalty from Final Fantasy VII. The Death Penalty is a rifle which increases in strength when Vincent kills enemies. Though the gun is a rifle, Vincent wields it with only one hand like a pistol due to the lack of a two-handed animation. Vincent's guns typically have mediocre attack power but two of them have a 255% hit rate, meaning they will never miss. Death Penalty's power is boosted after every enemy it kills. Due to a glitch, if enough enemies are killed, the death penalty can kill any enemy with a single hit, including super bosses. Regal Blaster, Banjo Tui. The Brigo Blaster is an ability learned in the Mayahem Temple in Banjo Tui. With it, Banjo can hold Kazooie like a rifle and use her to fire eggs while in first person view. While in this mode, players have access to whatever egg types they have unlocked. Regular eggs, fire eggs, grenade eggs, ice eggs, and the clockwork Kazooie bomb. Special golden eggs are also found in these areas, which give the player unlimited amounts of ammo for a short time. Another move that can be learned is the beak bayonet, which is a thrusting melee attack on the enemy. The range is quite short, so it's only used as a last resort tactic. The Hunter Rifle, Prey. The Hunter Rifle is an automatic weapon that fires bolts of energy at a medium rate. Secondary fire causes an appendage to emerge from the weapon and attach itself to Tommy's eyeball, augmenting his vision with a zoomed in, scope-like view. In this mode, creatures will glow, much like night vision, when the targeting area passes over them. Also, while zoomed, the rifle fires only single shots that are much more powerful and use much more ammo. The gun appears to be made from organic alien material, as there appears to be claws and a tentacle eye. The gun is shown to be alive as it can be seen moving in the idle animation. The hunter rifle makes this list because the ammo recharges automatically, so players didn't ever need to find any ammunition for it. The HV Hammerhead, Fear 2. The Armor Cam High Velocity Hammerhead is a deadly weapon encountered in the latter part of the game, especially being the heavy armor's equivalent to a Strander Assault Rifle. The Hammerhead is an extremely accurate and fitted in optic reflex sight for longer wrist fire. The rate of fire is rapid enough to surpass all but the toughest targets and bring down any regular enemy in a short burst of fire. The HV Hammerhead retains the HV Penetrative signature ability of pinning unfortunate targets to nearby surfaces and the glowing fleches remain visible for a while after being fired. Most of the Hammerhead's power comes from a middle ability to penetrate armour, dealing over twice the effective damage per shot. The Hammerhead appears to be a punatic rifle, accelerating its projectiles with compressed inert gas rather than gunpowder. The upper section of the stock appears to house a large gas canister, and gas escaped from a vent near the weapon's muzzle during the reload animation. Dragoon Blunderbuss from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Freedom Cry. The Dragoon Blunderbuss is a rare shotgun found in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag Freedom Cry DLC. It's typically loaded with a number of lead balls, giving it a shotgun effect when shot. The Dragoon Blunderbuss is especially powerful in the fact that it can eliminate many enemies at once, specifically enemies that are grouped together. The Dragoon Blunderbuss is unlocked by getting 100% synchronization on all missions. Corvo's Crossbow Dishonor The crossbow can carry basic crossbow bolts, incendiary bolts, and sleep darts, which are the only ranged, non-lethal attack in the game. Corvo can carry 10 of each different type of bolt, prior to any upgrades. This weapon can also be upgraded to improve accuracy, range, and reload speed, as well as Corvo's bolt capacity. Crossbow bolts are the standard type of crossbow ammunition, and they're the first and most basic accessory that Corvo receives for the weapon. They can sometimes be retrieved from corpses, providing that they were not broken in an assault on the enemy. 
They result in an instant kill when used to shoot an unaware enemy in the head. Incendiary bolts are another type of crossbow ammunition. Incendiary bolts are extremely deadly to both the player and foes. They're filled with whale oil, which ignites to produce an intense light and flame for a very short duration. Sleep darts are the non-lethal type of ammunition. The darts are filled with a plant-based chemical that causes unaware targets to fall unconscious instantly when shot. Regardless of how many times a target is hit by sleep darts, they will never be killed. But caution should be observed when attempting non-lethal action. When unconscious, enemies are highly susceptible to fall damage and may be killed if they are not on a safe, flat surface. Stake Gun Painkiller Hell and Damnation The stake gun's primary fire mode launches wooden stakes from a pneumatic swing to impale or to implode an opponent. If it travels at a certain distance, it'll ignite, causing fire damage to it. But its trajectory will slowly decay. The secondary fire mode launches a grenade, which explodes after a few seconds, or if it hits a foe. The downside is that it's easy to hurt yourself with this, as they explode upon contact, and it has a much lower range than the rocket launcher. The grenade itself can also be shot by the wooden stake in a fight, making it an ideal combo for players. This combo makes the grenade launcher a short range, but erupts instantly. Mixed with the in-game physics, the stake gun is one of the most satisfying weapons to ever appear on a video game. Rivet Gun from Bar Shot 2 The rivet gun is a single-shot, semi-automatic range weapon that fires high-speed rivets. It's fast, accurate, powerful, and has low recoil. Subject Delta is also able to fire three different ammunition types, heavy, beated, and trap. The player is able to headshot enemies with the rivet gun, dealing 300% normal damage. Compared to the Rosie's weapon, Delta's has a much more complex design and is designed to better suit combat at the cost of its repetitive capabilities. Furthermore, the weapon can be upgraded to have a larger clip size, more damage, and a heating system that gives its rivets a chance to ignite enemies. At the start of the game, it can be used to help determine one's combat preferences and remain a useful tool in one's arsenal for almost any situation afterwards. AA-12 Shotgun from Killing Floor The AA-12 Shotgun is the Tier 3 weapon available for the support specialists. The AA-12 is a fully automatic combat shotgun with rate of fire and magazine size comparable to assault rifles, but lacks internal magazines compared to assault rifles. It also has smaller spread than any other shotgun and a longer effective range. The high rate of fire and damage output is enough to kill a flesh pound under most circumstances. The AA-12 has the largest ammo reserve of the shotguns at 80 shells by default. The AA-12's alt-fire option switches to a semi-automatic which can be used to preserve ammunition. It also has cheap shotgun ammo at £2 per shot. But the reason why it isn't higher on this list is because the automatic fire can really be wasteful and very expensive. FCA-26 Rail Driver from Red Faction The FCA-26 Magnetic Rail Driver is a favoured weapon amongst the mercenary regiment supporting the Ultor Corporation in the First Martian Revolution. It's a powerful weapon that is capable of shooting heavy metal slugs, which appear as bright blue beams and pass through solid objects like concrete and even steel. The scope has a kind of heat vision, allowing players to see people through walls as orange silhouettes. Unfortunately, the weapon only holds one slug at a time, which necessitates a reload after every shot. Not recommended for close quarters combat, but still an excellent addition to the arsenal. Bullseye. Resistance, Fall of Man. The Bullseye is one of the most versatile and useful weapons in the Resistance franchise, with the exception in Resistance Retribution, which is replaced by the Razor. It is the main firearm used by the Chimeran hybrid foot soldiers, and therefore one of the most commonly seen weapons throughout the Resistance series. 
The bullseye's primary fire shoots small glowing red spheres that home in on the bullseye tag, its secondary fire which after being shot sticks to an enemy. The bullseye has the ability to create a bullseye trap. This is created by pressing and holding the secondary fire while targeting a surface. Firing at the place tag will cause the bullets to orbit in the air above it. A set bullseye tag will then be retargeted by firing a second tag at an enemy, which will cause the orbiting rounds to hit the enemy at once, or made to explode by holding the tag button again. Tanagashima, Metal Gear Solid 4. The Tanagashima can be purchased from Drebin in Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Its full price is 1 million DP, although a 50% discount is available during Act 5 and a 20% discount on Wednesdays and Sundays. The Tanagashima is a very awkward weapon in combat, as an antiquated matchlock gun. It can hold only one bullet at a time, worse still the reloading process takes several seconds with Snake frozen on the spot for the entire time. The true uniqueness of this weapon though is its secret effect. Every time you fire the Tanigashima, there is a 1 in 3 chance that it will initiate a divine win, which will carry and blow away soldiers within its effect. Players don't actually have to hit them with the weapon, it's the direction that counts. As they are buffeted by the Howling Gate, soldiers will drop an astonishing number of items. The variety isn't great, but it's a remarkable way to gain new supplies if you're running low. The Tanagashima's special effect will only occur if Snake is outdoors, and if there is sufficient space around him. The overall design for the Tanagashima musket was likewise based on the Demon Lock rifle in the Monster Hunter branches. Chemical Thrower Bioshock The Chemical Thrower fires a straight continuous stream of different chemicals and substances as the ammo is consumed. The three different chemicals are napalm, liquid nitrogen, and electric gel. Napalm is the standard ammunition which engulfs the enemy in fire. Liquid nitrogen freezes the enemy in their tracks and electric gel fires an electrical stream at the enemy. The chemical thrower can be used to replace the plasmids incinerate, winter blast, and electrical, thereby freeing up half the player's plasmid slots. The chemical thrower looks to be constructed of almost entirely common household and industrial items, including a wrench. With the weaknesses of the weapon being extremely slow reload times, ineffectiveness at long range, and a very high rate of ammo consumption. The Exidium E. Divine Cybermancy the Exidium is a powerful, armor-piercing, explosive projectile launcher equipped with a zoom. It has good accuracy, a large area of effect, makes damage in all parts of the body, and is able to devastate almost any enemy in one round from a good range. It is greatly effective against hordes of enemies, and can be used for indirect fire over a considerable distance. However, the Exidium has a low rate of fire, a five-round magazine, and is fairly heavy. Hypervelocity Cannon, Parasite Eve 2. A magnetic railgun that uses supersonic sound. It is as heavy as an MM1 and usually does 2,000 plus damage to any enemy, which rips most if not all bosses apart with ease. It does not use normal ammunition, instead using a battery that can fire 100 shots before it needs to be recharged, which can be done for free at any of the game's shops. Its blast also has a wide swath, so it can wipe out entire groups of enemies with a single shot. Sadly, it has a 5 second charge time before each shot, and its heavy weight will require several seconds for Aya to raise the weapon and line it up with the target, making it poor for close range fights. A collector favorite as it saves BP for other purposes. The Rocket Launcher, Shadow Warrior Classic. The Rocket Launcher is an extremely powerful weapon, capable of blowing up even the toughest of enemies in just a few hits. Explosions have massive splash damage, so they can take out multiple enemies if they're close to the impact. The other cool feature about this Rocket Launcher is, is that it has three different fire modes, Static, Heat Seeker, and Nuke. 
Static mode will allow the player to fire fast-moving static rockets at enemies. Simple, effective, and it deals massive damage. The Heat Seeker mode activates the next five rockets to home in on whatever enemy is currently on screen. The Nuke mode is the most devastating of the three, but the main drawback is that the player can only ever hold one. This does massive damage to everything caught in the blast radius, as well as letting off gas as fallout, which may come in handy should multiplayer ever be integrated. Finally, and this should go without saying, do not use this at any kind of close range. Did I make that clear enough? Typhoon. Crisis 3. The Typhoon is a submachine gun featured in Crisis 3. It has a 720 round magazine and an incredibly rapid rate of fire. Compared to the MK60, the Typhoon has a larger magazine size and a tube-like chamber for the magazine, and sacrifices accuracy and damage for a high rate of fire. The extremely high rate of fire and low damage drains ammo very quickly. This weapon is highly destructive and is capable of wiping out entire hordes of infantry. The incredibly high rate of fire and spread make it extremely likely that it will hit an enemy's most vulnerable spots, even if they're not what's being aimed at. For this reason, even a tiny burst has a good chance of landing a headshot on a human opponent or hitting an unarmored area of a Seth Trooper. The Typhoon has a default secondary fire mode, which switches the alignment of the barrels, configuring it into what is essentially an automatic shotgun, using up to 36 rounds each time. Flat Cannon from Unreal Tournament. The Flat Cannon is a favorite weapon amongst players, easily allowing them to shred enemies at close quarters. The primary fire launches linear shrapnels that can deplete any armor and kill the target in a single or maximum of two hits. The secondary fire holds a chunk of molten metal at mid-range, which provides splash damage. The secondary fire can also be useful to shoot enemies sitting behind cover. With an ammo capacity of 50, this weapon is handy in a deathmatch. The flak from a flak burst will suddenly become affected by gravity if it hits a wall or a floor, so you can apply some skill and bounce flak around if you wanted to annoy people at long distances. However, it's inadvisable to do this as the shots are weaker and do far less damage. It's also notable that firing from long range makes the pellets get less accurate over time, so the best use for the flak cannon is to use it as a shotgun as it deals heavy damage up close. Ray Gun from Call of Duty Black Ops 2 The Ray Gun is often the most favoured weapon in zombies due to its ability to kill in one shot. The Ray Gun has a large ammo capacity for such a high damage weapon and is pinpoint accurate, meaning that the player should aim their shots very carefully especially since it takes small but notable amount of time for the shot to reach its target. The Ray Gun can hold 20 rounds, 40 when the pack are punched, inside its magazine which is strangely stuck into the barrel. The magazine seems to be two batteries stuck together with electric tape. Via Shotgun from Lost Planet 2 The Via Shotgun is one of the most powerful close range weapons next to the Via Saw. Close range blasts from this weapon are capable of stumbling and severely damaging a VS and outright killing a human target on foot. Despite its close combat effectiveness, the power of this weapon quickly diminishes with range, making it unsuitable for use outside of close combat. The magazine of the VS shotgun will alter its position depending on its ammunition. It's likely that the VS shotgun works similar to the Franchi SPAS-12 in that it has a selective firing mechanism that allows the user to switch between pump action and semi-automatic modes. Kitty Cannon, Sunset Overdrive. The Kitty Cannon is a miscellaneous weapon in Sunset Overdrive. Though you cannot use any other weapon while holding the Kitty Cannon, Boo Boo is quite capable of destroying anything you put in his way. Seriously, that dog can even one-shot Herkers. Just shoot the kitty in any area and the Robo Dog will follow, destroying any enemies in its path. The Robo Dog will absolutely destroy anything you fire the kitty at. The best part is the ammo is infinite, which means you can shoot the kitty cannon as many times as you want. Sadly, 
You'll have to give up the kitty cannon when Boo Boo is returned. Gonzo Gun The Suffering The Gonzo Gun is a secret weapon found rather late in the game in The Suffering and can be unlocked via built-in cheats in The Suffering ties that bind. The Gonzo Gun quite literally resembles a chicken that fires eggs. It has the same ammo capacity as the dual revolvers and will completely decimate any non-captain malfactor it hits. The only downside to the Gonzo Gun is that once you use up all the ammo, you can't find any more. Unless you use cheats. Mollusk Launcher Saints Row the Third. Professor Genki's Mollusk Launcher is a bright colored weapon that fires live octopi at targets. The gun combines properties of a rocket launcher and satchel charges. The octopi fly straight forward, stick to whatever they hit, and can be rapidly detonated using the grenade button. Unique to this gun is the mind control ability. When a human target is hit, they first burst out into dance, then aid the player in combat for as long as the octopus remains attached. The mind control ability does not work on everyone. Co-op players, homies, and brutes are immune, but can still be damaged by detonating the attached octopus. This weapon was originally only available to pre-order customers as part of Professor Genki's Hyper Ordinary Pre-Order Pack. This pack was renamed Funtime Pack and released as a standalone DLC in February 2012. Lightning Gun Evolve The Lightning Gun is a close-range weapon that does an insane 30 gigavolts of electrical damage. The Lightning Gun is powerful, but it has extremely limited active energy. It's best to keep an eye on the energy amount and make sure to switch weapons to avoid wasting time. This can be effective at eradicating hazardous pack-hunting predators like reavers or trap jaws. It is less efficient at mid and long range though. The lightning gun doesn't reload, instead it takes a few seconds to recharge. The arching of the lightning gun will extend from monster to wildlife, so make sure there's no hostile life next to the monster when taking a shot. Shrink Ray, Duke Nukem Forever. The Shrink Ray will shrink any enemy it hits. The primary and only function of the Shrink Ray is to shrink enemy. Even though it inflicts no damage whatsoever, it's arguably one of the most devastating weapons in the entire franchise. The player should come close and stomp the shrunk enemy, otherwise the enemy will turn back to its normal size after 11 seconds. Enemies shrunk are about 10 times weaker to weapons than they normally would be, and enemies that are on the ground can be stepped on by Duke for a one-hit KO. The Shrink Ray has a surprisingly fast firing rate, and can emit a large quantity of projectiles in a short period of time. The Shrink Ray in Duke Nukem Forever seems to remember more closely the GLOPP Ray from Duke Nukem Manhattan Project, rather than the classic Duke Nukem 3D Shrink Ray. Cow Launcher, South Park 64 the cow launcher fired cows that would land on your opponent's head. If the target was not locked on, the cow would explode upon contact, making a green gas not unlike the Terrence and Philip dolls. If the target is locked on, it lands on the enemy's head. The unfortunate thing with this gun is, if you get hit with one of these in multiplayer, your screen looks like the inside of a cow's butt. Las Cannon from Warhammer 40k. The Las Cannon is one of the anti tank weapons available to Imperial forces. Its high strength and armor piercing ability make it a formidable weapon. Las Cannons are basically a significantly scaled up implementation of the Las technology also used in Las Rifles. 
Space Marines make use of las cannons as a shoulder-fired weapon and are also fielded in Imperial Guard heavy weapon scores as a tripod mounted crew served weapon. Las cannons are also mounted on land raiders, predators, dreadnoughts and many other Imperial vehicles. Silver Baller, Hitman. The Silver Baller, or AMT Hardballer, is a stainless steel clone of the Colt M1911A and is the signature weapon of Agent 47. In the game, it has a 7 round magazine capacity and fires automatic Colt pistol rounds. In Hitman Blood Money, the Silver Baller starts off as a single unsuppressed gun, though the dual and suppressed upgrades, optics and different ammo types can be bought later. In Hitman Absolution, the gun is suppressed with no optical attachments but can be dual wielded from the start. A gun of choice for 47, the Silver Baller can easily conceal to take out targets up close with a suppressor to ensure he remains undetected. If he ever finds himself in a tight situation however, he can rely on the extra firepower of dual Silver Ballers to neutralise the threat and escape. Leichenfaust 44 Wolfenstein 2009. The Leichenfaust is a result of the Nazi Veil program and fires Veil energy in a twisting beam which often disintegrates living targets. It's useful for quickly clearing multiple enemies down a narrow hall as it quickly jumps from target to target. The Flux Arc upgrade makes the weapon aim automatically and sends it into a gun usable at any decent range. With M Power, the Leichenfaust is able to demolish even every enemy in the game, including most bosses. The only major drawback is that, even with the Veil Catalyst, it takes about a short while to discharge the weapon upon pulling the trigger. While ammo is not as abundant as the Car 98 and the MPs, it's still relatively plentiful, as troopers wielding this weapon will become fairly common later into the game. In short, this is the weapon the player will use most often for close quarters combat. Seeker Rifle Singularity The E99 incorporated into each round produces powerful explosions, killing most targets with a single shot. The Seeker is a special weapon that cannot be upgraded or stored in the weapon's locker, and will be dropped when switching to another weapon or when out of ammunition. The Seeker carries a maximum of 12 rounds, 6 in the magazine, with 6 extra. The reason that the Seeker rifle isn't stored in a weapon locker is because it's already overpowered and has the ability to steer bolts around corners. Using this gun throughout the game is considered, more or less, cheating. Darkness Guns The Darkness the Darkness Gun acts as something like infinite ammo weapons that draw upon your darkness energy instead of physical ammo. There are two of them, both shaped like pistols. The one on the right will fire small bolts of darkness and act like an SMG, while the one on the left will fire something similar to a sonic boom and kill most enemies on impact. The Darkness Guns are notable for being capable of permanently killing the undead enemies in the World War I sequences in the game. Killing them with other weapons will allow them to eventually come back to life until Jackie devours their heart. Dark Energy Cannon Metroid Prime 2 the Dark Beam fires a blast of dark energy that can encase its targets in dark matter, in a function similar to that of the Ice Beam. Normal blast from the Dark Beam takes numerous hits to encase its target, whereas the charged Dark Beam, known as the Entangler, can instantly encase a target. The Entangler also spreads to any nearby enemies, either damaging or freezing them. Samus can shatter most encased enemies with missiles. Samus can use the Dark Beam to open portals to Dark Aether. Shields with the light polarity can be overloaded by the Dark Beam. Hyper Blaster, Silent Hill. The Hyper Blaster is a weapon obtained after the UFO ending of Silent Hill. Alternatively, the player can plug in one of the Konami justifiers in the P2 slot. It will appear in Harry Mason's inventory at the start of the game in the cafe. No ammunition is required and it has a long range. 
It will automatically aim, which means it will rarely miss its target. The auto-aim will also sight enemies in the dark through walls. After the gun is acquired, subsequent playthroughs will yield three possible upgrades. Red Beam, Yellow Beam, and Green Beam. To obtain the Green Hyper Blaster, the player must achieve a 10-star rating. The Flame Wall Gun Rise of the Triads The Flame Wall Gun is one of the most powerful weapons in Rise of the Triads. The Flame Wall basically looks like a hybrid of a flamethrower and a rocket launcher. And that's kind of exactly what it is. It's basically a rocket launcher with a flamethrower backpack attached to it. When fired, the flame wall will launch a rocket that goes straight for a second and then suddenly dips down and hits the floor. After the rocket hits the floor, it creates a giant wall of flame that spreads to the width of the room it was fired in, which then goes forward until it hits a wall. If the flame wall hits the target, it will instantly kill anything it touches into bones. The only enemies immune to it are robots and bosses. Flame wall guns are one of the rarest explosive weapons in the game, primarily because of how powerful they are. Most flame walls are hidden in secret areas, but you can occasionally find one out in the open. A single flame wall blast will clear out a group of enemies in a single shot, no matter how many enemies are in the group. This makes the flame wall the ultimate weapon for clearing out enemies. The only downside is that it is useless against bosses and robots, like we said. Swapper Gun, the Swapper. The Swapper Gun allows you to make up the four clones and the ability to swap to a specific clone. By pressing the left trigger, players are able to create a red outline of themselves that can be placed nearly anywhere in the area. Upon releasing the button, a clone is dropped at the player's position of choice. Clones undertake the same actions as the actual player, mimicking everything from directional movement to jumping. The right trigger swaps the player's consciousness to any clone in their direct line of sight, allowing access to previously inaccessible areas. If this sounds straightforward, that's because it absolutely is. The simple spawning and swapping mechanic is technically the only gameplay element in the swapper. Players have up to five clones at their disposal, and how they are used is entirely up to them. The Smart Pistol Mark V Titanfall The Smart Pistol Mark V is a primary weapon for pilots appearing in Titanfall. The Smart Pistol looks like a handgun in appearance, but fires bullet-like projectiles that will actually lock onto enemies. It is extremely efficient at landing headshots, but the lock-on distance is rather short. In order to lock onto targets, they must stay within a frame-like reticule around your screen. Target acquisition is fast, and while you can acquire multiple targets, they can only be acquired one at a time. The damage for the pistol is different for each enemy. It can eliminate a grunt with a single shot, a specter with two shots, and an enemy pilot with three shots. SBP 500 Time Splitters Future Perfect. The SBP-500 is one of the most powerful submachine guns in Time Splitter's Future Perfect. This weapon features a 64 round top loading magazine akin to the real life P90. Although the reload mechanism is quite different and somewhat unorthodox. The SBP-500 seems to have an integral sound suppressor that offers a very high rate of fire, around 900 bullets per minute. Coupled with its large magazine, this latter fact makes it ideally suited to close quarters engagements. Although care should be taken as it's capable of draining its ammunition supply rather quickly. The 10 Lost DXR6 Disruptor Rifle Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast 
The Disruptor is the most powerful weapon in the entire game. A single Disruptor Blast can eliminate all enemies within a large radius. Disruptors are similar to their blaster counterparts in many ways, such as the use of blaster gas and energy cells. Disruptors, however, use extremely high amounts of unstable blaster energy, enough to obliterate matter on a higher scale than normal blasters. A shot from a disruptor could vaporize a being almost instantly. A disruptor is capable of disintegrating a humanoid target, turning it completely into a pile of ash, and is quite effective against other solid targets, even capable of damaging starship hulls. The disruptor's only weakness is that ammo is unfortunately scarce, and it's incapable of firing rapidly or of simply being set to stun. Penetrator from Bulletstorm. The Penetrator is a menacing tool that harpoons a powerful drill into anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in its sights. Its charge shot allows you to bury the drill into an enemy and then steer the enemy via the embedded drill into other enemies or environmental hazards by holding down the fire button. Once charged, two things can be done. The weapon can be used as a melee weapon if rammed into an enemy or the charge drill can be controlled when inside an enemy's body by pulling the trigger while aimed at something or someone else. Iridium Weapons from Borderlands Iridium weapons are weapons left on Pandora by the Iridian race. They have a curved, organic appearance and do not use standard ammunition like most other guns on Pandora. Being energy weapons, these weapons consume charges from their magazines when fired. The magazines will restore to maximum capacity if the weapon is not fired for several seconds, thus providing a weapon with theoretically unlimited ammunition. Iridium weapons recharge while in non-active weapon slot, making it possible to switch between several Iridium weapons without waiting for one to cool down. A discharge Iridium weapons can also be instantly recharged by unequipping and re-equipping weapons. All pre-Nox Iridium weapons have a rarity colour of green, but are much harder to come by than other green weapons. The Secret Armory of General Nox DLC introduced several new Iridium weapons. A few of these models, such as the Iridium Mega Cannon, come only in orange varieties. However, just as their green counterparts, these guns have exceedingly rare drop rates, surpassing pearlescent weapons. Wunderwaffe DG2 Call of Duty World at War The Wunderwaffe is the second wonder weapon in appearance and the strongest weapon in the game. It debuted in Shinonuma and Nazi Zombies in the second Call of Duty World at War map pack. Packed with the devastating chained electrical current, it has infinite damage, being able to kill 10 zombies instantly in a chain of electricity. After the bolt reaches a target, it then jumps to another target, and then another target. The Wunderwaffe is powered by three vacuum tube bulbs on the left side, and the player must reload it with new bulbs because the film of the metal that conducts the electricity throughout the circuit eventually burn out. The Wunderwaffe DG2 can only be obtained from the mystery box on both maps. Spin Fusion from Tribes Ascend The Spin Fusion is an explosive weapon used by the soldier class in the game Tribes Ascend and one of the most popular on the battlefield. The Spin Fusion has a relatively slow fire rate because it must be reloaded after each shot. The shots themselves also travel at a medium velocity, allowing them to be dodged. However, it should be noted that when the Spin Fusion shots make contact with something, they deal damage in an area of effect with a good amount of damage being dealt at the point of contact. The Spin Fuser is a particularly deadly weapon to both the player and their targets in close quarters because of its area of effect. If the target is in close proximity, the player can take just as much damage from their shots as they do. The M6 Spartan Laser, Halo 3. The M6 Spartan Laser is a man-portable, shoulder-fired, directed energy weapon used by the UNSC. The Spartan Laser is the most powerful weapon in Halo 3, combining long range with a lethal and sudden force. The weapon is classed as an anti-infantry and anti-vehicle weapon, making it a weapon that can destroy almost anything in the operator's path. 
all destructible vehicles are often blown up in a single strike, except in the case of a near miss, in which case the target will still suffer heavy damage. It can also strike and kill multiple opponents and vehicles if they're lined up properly. It is more powerful than the standard rocket launcher, and since the main beam travels instantly, it can be used far more easily and reliably at range. As with all powerful weapons, the downside is that the Spartan laser needs to charge for 3 seconds before firing, and requires another 2 to 4 seconds to cool down after firing. The M490 Blackstorm, Mass Effect 2. The M490 shoots out an orb-like projectile that has its own gravitational pull, which will head to the location where the weapon was pointing, while dragging any foes, provided their shielding or barrier or armor is down, with it until it implodes, pressing matter out and sending foes flying, while enemies that happen to reach zero health while in its gravitational field will disappear inside of it, resembling a black hole. This is great for clearing out corridors filled with enemies, and it can take out a portion of armor as well if the blast is close enough. The M490 is extremely effective against multiple husks. Thanks to the husk's low health, the projectile of the weapon simply pulls the husk with itself, killing them quickly and without any hard work. Unfortunately, the M490 Blackstorm is an ultra-rare weapon in the Mass Effect series, being only available in the Terminus Weapon and Armor DLC pack. What this means is that the weapon is only available to those who had pre-ordered Mass Effect 2 from certain retailers. The only other way it could be obtained was purchasing it on the PlayStation 3 network under the N7 Complete Arsenal bundle. It's a bit of bullshit, but that's the way things are these days. Mr. Toots, Red Faction Armageddon. Mr. Toots is the name of one of the weapons in the game Red Faction Armageddon. Mr. Toots shoots rainbow laser blasts out of his butt. Like the Nyan Cat name, remember that one? Mr. Toots also has limited ammunition, or gas in this case. Mr. Toots is highly accurate and extremely destructive. The rainbow that fires is produced as a laser and can destroy anything in its path. Enemies that are killed by this ray will have a tendency to explode into a group of rainbows and butterflies that quickly disperse. Mr. Toots can be obtained in two ways. First, by finishing the initial storyline, or secondly, by finding him in a secret room during the first mission. When you get the message, Hold to speak with Kara. Do not press it. Instead, face the doorway and look to the back corner of the room. You should see a door. Break it and head inside. When you reach the end of the corridor, look down and destroy the floor. When you hit the floor, continue up to the hall and break every door. When you reach a chasm, stand at the edge and a slab of floor should appear. When you get into this room, you'll find a copy of Mr. Toots on the floor and bunnies jumping in and out of holes. The EM-1 Quantum Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Day Zero The EM-1 Quantum from the Day Zero edition of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is a multiplayer gun you get in the game Special Edition. The gun serves as a submachine gun that uses lasers instead of bullets, thus providing an infinite amount of ammunition, but can be overheated and causes a depletion of battery. The Quantum is useful in close to medium range gunfights, and has extremely accurate hip fire reticle, and no spread. However, its damage is very low, and at long ranges, the accuracy significantly decreases. Railgun, Grand Theft Auto 5. The Railgun is a high-tech military prototype which fires kinetic energy penetrator rounds at very high velocity. The rounds travel much faster than regular firearm bullets and 
In addition to its hypersonic velocity, the kinetic energy rounds are capable of causing massive damage due to its velocity and energy. The resulting energy creates a powerful explosion on impact with the target. The shot seems to reach its target instantly. However, rate of fire is very poor, taking several seconds between shots to recharge the gun. As a result, this weapon seems very effective at taking down helicopters and destroying vehicles, but in return, seems less effective against enemies on foot. The blast radius of an exploding car can destroy or severely damage surrounding vehicles. Against helicopters or any other aircraft, the weapon takes two shots, which may be a disadvantage. It is featured in the enhanced version of Grand Theft Auto V and doesn't appear on the PS3 or Xbox 360 versions. The gun, however, cannot be used online. The Type 7 Particle Cannon First Encounter Assault Recon The Type 7 Particle Cannon is a particle beam based sniper weapon found in fear. When the beam hits a target, it will strip the target's flesh and armor, leaving behind only blackened skeletal remains. The Type 7's high quality zoom and very high power makes it the ultimate long range weapon. One shot will kill any Rev-6 powered armor, replica elite soldier, or heavy armor in one hit. However, enemies on higher difficulties are more likely to survive the Type 7 attack, but it will still leave them with only a little bit of health left. This high damage attribute makes it very useful for destroying groups of enemies from a distance. Even with strong enemies, it is very effective, and it's a handy weapon to have with you at all times. While the Type 7 does have a small magazine size, its power means the player will be able to wipe out a group before they even have to reload. The Type 7 is technically a plasma railgun, and it's useful against any enemy, provided that the player has a decent aim. VC-5 Arc Rifle. Killzone 2. The VC-5 Arc Rifle is one of the latest additions to the Heligast arsenal and is manufactured by Vasari Corporation. The VC-5 holds four reservoirs of weapons-grade petrocyte, a substance which draws energy from the surrounding air and condenses it into high-voltage charges. When fired, the electrical charge locks on to the closest conductive target and other targets close enough to that target. It has interruptible reload, which is ideal in the middle of a fight. The Atomos Warframe The Atomos is a Grenier particle cannon, firing a heat-based beam that can chain between multiple enemies. When fired at an enemy, the beam from the Atomos will link between multiple adjacent enemies within 3 meters of the initial target and each other, as well as any caught within the width of the beam. They'll be damaged too. The beam can also continue to chain to other enemies even after they're dead. It has a small radius of damage around itself, similar to the Ignis or the Embolist. Unfortunately, the Atomos covers up part of the reticule when aiming. This, combined with the beam's odd behavior of slowly rotating around a central point, means that occasionally the beam will fire behind the weapon with no way of knowing if you're aiming at the enemy or not. Maria, Fallout New Vegas. A custom model of the M&A 9mm pistol made by M&A gun manufacturers, this weapon is an image of Our Lady Gudalape, a well-known Catholic figure and a representation of the biblical woman of the apocalypse, painted on the pearl grips of the firearm. The entire body of the pistol is engraved with ivy and floral details with a polished nickel finish. It's an accurate variant of the 9mm pistol, that has a higher rate of fire, more damage per shot, is more accurate and has a higher durability than the stranded variant. It is a recoil operated locked breech pistol with a linkless barrel boat slide, locking system and external hammer. It is a single action pistol, meaning the slide must be pulled manually to cock the weapon and make it ready to fire. Like most unique weapons, weapon modifications cannot be used on Maria.
the X43 MIKE from Crisis 2. The X43 MIKE is a rare weapon appearing about 5 times in total. It is a very effective weapon against enemies. It causes the biological aliens inside the exoskeletons to violently swell up and explode after only a few seconds of exposure to the beam. It is especially effective against heavy sefs. The weapon's strength is compensated by its relatively short range and the scarcity of its ammunition, which can only be obtained separately from the weapon and cannot be found in military supply crates. By firing, it emits a constant barrage of microwaves on a target. While it may stun the enemy, it will continually damage them faster than most conventional weapons. Displacer Cannon Half-Life Opposing Force The Displacer Cannon is a portable teleportation weapon developed by Black Mesa before the incident. Displacer Cannons have two different modes. The first generates a displacement portal ahead of the user, allowing the teleportation of a single object or being. The second mode generates a portal behind the emitters, teleporting the user with the weapon and giving a significant amount of damage to anyone nearby right before the teleportation occurs. The dangerous aspects of displacer cannon technology also allow it to be used as a powerful weapon. The user can purposely fire a portal near to an enemy or into the midst of a group of enemies. Firstly, the arcs of lightning may cause some harm to begin with, and then when the portal collapses after hitting the ground or wall, the shockwave is capable of eliminating several human-sized targets. Additionally, the teleportation destination can be set to send anything it hits into an undesirable or dangerous location. Augur, Resistance 3 The Augur is the third weapon acquired after killing the first Steelhead in Paradise Lost. It has a cross resemblance between Resistance Fall of Man and Resistance 2 Augers. It retains the ability of shooting high energy bolts that burns through solid objects, and increase in power by doing so. Furthermore, its secondary fire deploys an energy shield that blocks all enemy projectiles except other Augur bolts. The rate of fire is slightly slower than the previous Augers from the previous games. It also includes an electronic scope with a heads up display that can identify friend in blue and foe in orange. Magrail, Deus Ex, Invisible War. The Magrail is an experimental energy weapon produced and supervised by Dr. Patton, the Magrail project manager for Mako Ballistics. It was launched in 2072, just after Alex Denton comes in the Seattle Mako Ballistics facility. Its primary fire is a semi automatic high density energy beam with high damage and accuracy, not affected by damage resistance and can easily severely damage bots or a powered armor person. Its alternative fire is an EMP blast through walls and other solid objects, striking the target without damaging the intervening objects, which also affects organic beings and disabling bots and turrets in only one shot. Both firing modes use a medium amount of damage per shot. No matter what firing mode is used, there is a noticeable cooldown between shots. The mag rail is difficult to use in close quarters combat, so a sidearm built for close quarters such as a shotgun or the energy blade can be very useful. Land Shark Gun, armed and dangerous. The Land Shark Gun doesn't use bullets. Unsurprisingly, it uses Land Sharks. The Land Shark Gun has the advantage of firing an actual rapidly maturing infant Land Shark that then cruises around the map, slaughtering your enemies for you. The Land Shark Gun is probably more practical giving you the ability to attack enemies with other weapons while your ravenous ally goes about with his dark business. This is a great system, as it is a true fire and forget gun, and a very unique video game weapon that must have took a very creative mind to manifest it. TG-2A Minigun Fear Extraction Point the individual bullets are weak, but this is easily compensated by the 1000 rounds per minute rate of fire. The rate of fire alone makes this a good weapon against heavy enemies and an excellent weapon for tearing through a close range firefight. Also, the maximum ammunition is all held within the gun, so it never has to be reloaded. The 
few drawbacks are the noticeable movement slowdown when carrying it, ammunition is rare, only found when carried by certain heavy ride armor, and the inaccuracy makes it a poor weapon at long range. Combining TG2A with slow-mo is essential for aggressive gameplay. This also helps to conserve ammunition. Getting closer to targets means they are less likely to dodge the bullets fired from the TG2A, however, this is a fairly risky move especially on higher difficulties. The M60 Pistol, Halo Combat Evolved. Ironically, though the M6D is the most powerful of the M6 handgun series, in game it is referred to as simply a pistol, while the M6C, which is considerably less powerful, is called a magnum. Two shots anywhere on the Spartan and a final shot to the head will garner an instant kill. Five shots to the body will also deliver a similar effect. The pistol has a scope with a 2x zoom, 12 rounds per clip, and a maximum ammo of 120 bullets, plus the clip already in the gun. One of the largest factors of pistol accuracy is whether or not you are using a full automatic mode. Holding the trigger down activates a full automatic mode, meaning as long as you have the trigger held down, the pistol will shoot for you. Initially, it seems to make aiming slightly easier, but in reality, it can't serve any compromise since semi-automatic mode greatly degrades the accuracy of your shots. In other words, never hold down the trigger on a pistol to fire. Your shot accuracy will vastly impair your ability to hit a target. If you can shoot hunters and they're exposed back with an M6D, they will instantly die with one shot, even on legendary. Type 13 Arc Beam Rifle, Fear 3. The Type 13 Arc Beam Rifle is very much the same gun as the one seen in previous Fear Expansion Packs and Fear 2. It fires a continuous laser and is able to set enemies on fire. It deals heavy damage and is very effective against mechanized enemies. The beam reflects off certain surfaces, striking multiple valid targets. Only the Armacom Phase Caster carries this weapon, so it is scarce and a new gun must be obtained once the ammo supply is depleted. Unlike other weapons, the Arc Beam only has one energy meter and no magazine system. The Arc Beam is the only gun that does not have to be reloaded, as all the ammunition is stored within the gun, and thus doesn't have a reload animation. The gun also has a significantly longer usage time than its older game counterparts, but it will take a little longer to kill a single opponent with this gun. STA 5X Petricide Cannon, Kill Zone 3. The STA 5X Petrocyte Cannon is one of the latest additions to the Hellgas arsenal featured in Killzone 3 and is manufactured by Stow Arms. It's very powerful, killing a normal soldier in just one or two shots. The Arc Cannon can be charged by holding down the firing button which causes it to become more powerful while consuming more energy. Unlike the VC-5 Arc Gun, the STA 5X does not have unlimited ammunition and require either changing weapons or refilling ammo at ammunition crates which are common in the levels they're found in. There is no sight on the gun, but it rarely misses due to the unexplained form of auto-targeting and its high blast range. While the STA 5X is a very advanced weapon, it overheats very quickly, showing it's likely still in the prototype stages of production. Ebony and Ivory from Devil May Cry Ebony and Ivory are Dante's trademark pair of personally customised semi-automatic pistols designed to rapidly fire bullets instilled with his demonic power and are the only weapons to appear in every instalment in the series. The right-handed white gun Ivory was custom built for rapid firing and fast draw times while the left-handed black gun Ebony has been modified for long distance targeting and comfort. In Devil May Cry 3, upgrading it raises its maximum firepower. The inward facing side of each weapon side, Ebony's right and Ivory's left, is engraved with Ebony and Ivory in a cursive script along with the unique design of piano keys, further alluding to its name. The outward facing sides, Ebony's left and Ivory's right, are engraved with a dedication to Dante, which is explained in Devil May Cry Volume 1 to be from Neil Goldstein. The Authority Pulse Cannon. Ray. The Pulse Cannon fires much like a minigun with its default ammunition, but behaves in a completely different way when using the alternate ammo type. The standard Pulse rounds are already fairly powerful, 
and its 200 bullet capacity per magazine makes it perfect for the protagonist to spray kill enemies easily. However, the ammo does drain rather quickly, and it's recommended that players save up and purchase as many pulse rounds as possible from Johnny's supplies before embarking for one last mission. The BFG rounds only let the protagonist fire once before reloading. When using the BFG rounds, the player will have to hold the fire button in order to let it charge the max before firing. It is only effective against enemy packs or tough units like Authority Elites, but when it charges to the max, it releases a huge energy wave that will destroy almost anything at close to medium range. Thunder Gun Call of Duty Black Ops The Thunder Gun is a large, cannon-shaped weapon that fires blasts of incredibly strong compressed air. It has no iron sights, meaning it must be fired from the hip, although when observed in third person, it is held on the shoulder. It is able to kill large numbers of zombies with a single shot, sending them flying backwards or up. Those who are not killed by the blast are thrown backwards and will remain on the ground for a few seconds before getting back up. The Thunder Gun holds two rounds in its magazine, and has 12 rounds in reserve. The Thunder Gun can only be reloaded when all the shots have been fired. The Thunder Gun is important during the later rounds as it is useful for clearing large groups of zombies in order to reach a downed teammate or make an escape. It is extremely useful when swarmed as it will easily kill a large group of zombies in one shot. M60, Left 4 Dead 2. The M60 is a special tier weapon that was introduced in Left 4 Dead 2. It carries only 150 rounds and, after being depleted, is dropped. The survivor will then revert back to their secondary weapon, much like the grenade launcher. It does not currently spawn in any of the original Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns. Functionally, the M60 works as an assault rifle variant firearm. The M60 can mow down many infected faster, thus making taking out the horde quicker and easier. The only downside is that the M60's ammunition cannot be replenished, so when it's out of ammo, it's automatically discarded, and no replacement weapon is provided after dropping the M60, so the player is left bearing only the pre-existing secondary weapon. Goss Rifle Stalker The Goss Rifle Project 62, or Item 62, is a weapon created by researchers and weaponsmiths within the zone, appearing in one form or another in all the three Stalker games. Unlike traditional firearms, the Gauss rifle does not launch projectiles using combustion, but rather uses a series of electromagnets powered by fragments of flash artifact to fire special ferromagnetic slugs at high speeds, capable of completely ignoring protective armor. The setup makes it the epitome of the sniping weapons and excels in that role, with pinpoint accuracy, zero recoil, and almost invisible muzzle flash. The Gauss is perfect for sniping from any distance, however, the extreme damage of the shot is offset by an extremely low rate of fire. It can only fire once every two seconds, and reload adds another four seconds to the delay, the longest of any sniper rifle. Mark II Lancer Gears of War The Mark II Lancer Assault Rifle was an upgrade to the Retro Lancer, produced with a chainsaw bayonet, increased accuracy, lower recoil, and larger ammunition carrying capacity compared to its predecessor. This gun is intended for combat ranging from medium to short distances. It holds 60 rounds in its magazine, and a player can hold up to 660 rounds. The chainsaw bayonet can be activated by holding B. An enemy who is within a certain proximity of a player with the chainsaw rep will be instantly caught in the chainsaw animation, in which case is unavoidable death. Most fans love this weapon and use it mostly just for the chainsaw. While there is debate in online gaming communities that consider the Lancer to be one of the most cheapest weapons offered, there's no denying that it's effective and sleek in campaigns.
the ALP Counter-Strike. The ALP is a powerful bolt-action sniper rifle, available to both teams. It is infamously renowned for being able to instantly kill a player with one hit on any part of the body except for the legs. For this reason, the ALP is one of the most popular and widely used weapons in Counter-Strike series. Due to its overwhelming power and accuracy, the ALP has attracted much criticism. Many players view the ALP as an overpowered and unfair weapon, requiring little skill and practice to use. Many public servers ban the use of the ALP due to its unbalanced nature. However, the general opinion of the ALP is that there is still some tactical and useful merit to using it. Therefore, it is accepted by the majority of the community. The ALP is no longer as powerful as it once was. The ALP was most powerful in all versions prior to Counter-Strike 1.1 where one shot to any part of the body was an instant kill. Later updates reduced its effectiveness. The Plasma Gun, Doom 3. The Plasma Gun is slightly different from its earlier counterpart, as the projectiles now move at visibly slower speeds. Nevertheless, it still possesses some very effective firepower making it comparable to the higher-end weapons, such as the chain gun and the rocket launcher. The plasma gun has a decent damage per shot ratio, a good rate of fire, and absolutely perfect accuracy. Its primary limitation is the slow speed of the projectiles. The plasma gun should be employed only in short to medium range, but its accuracy does make it effective at long range as well. In the audio logs, video discs, and PDA emails, the plasma gun is a very wanted weapon around Mars City. And this is possibly due to its visual effects when fired. Unkempt Harold from Borderlands 2. The Unkempt Harold is a legendary torque pistol. It can be purchased from Torque vending machine as the item of the day. It also has an increased chance of dropping from Savage Lee. The Unkempt Herald is a deadly pistol which can be used in close and medium range encounters. Shots fired from this pistol slowly follows 3 to 5 to 7 pattern into 7 after travelling a certain distance. As long as the projectiles have begun splitting, regardless of progression, a full hit will do damage as though a full spread of 7 had connected. An Unkempt Herald with the prefix double penetrating will fire 2 spreads with 1 shot costing 6 ammo instead of 3. Husk of the Pit Destiny Husk of the Pit is a common auto rifle. It's an extremely rare drop from defeating the Blades of Crota. Currently, the only way to do this is by running the Fist of Crota mission. Husk of the Pit was added to the game as part of the downloadable content, the dart below. It's an average auto rifle that any character at level 10 or higher can use. The only immediate mystery to it is an upgrade called Cannibalism. With enough kills, the Husk of the Pit can evolve into the legendary auto rifle Idolon Alloy with Embalming Orb, purchased from Eris Morn. Hammer of Dawn, Gears of War 2 By far the strongest weapon in the game, the Hammer of Dawn is a target designator that's used to select a spot for a satellite strike. The satellite is emulsion powered, and it rains down a devastating particle energy stream. It takes about 3 to 4 seconds for the hammer to completely charge and fire. Since it works in conjunction with the satellite, the Hammer of Dawn can only be used outside in multiplayer matches, and during the campaign, the player cannot use it unless Anya has notified them whether the satellites are online or not. If hit directly by the hammer, any enemy is instantly killed, unless they are berserkers. The Hammer of Dawn has been widely feared and praised by the community of Gears of War 2. X-Buster from Dead Rising 3 The X-Buster is a secret weapon found in Dead Rising 3. Players would have to beat the game on Nightmare Mode. The X-Buster is based off Capcom's Mega Man series and their gun proved to be just as powerful and deadly as before. The Mega Buster was seen in the original Dead Rising, but the X-Buster in Dead Rising 3 takes the cake. It's the ultimate gun in the game, able to dispatch many enemies at once. The gun also makes short work of all the bosses in the game due to its high damage output. Gun 
Gluon Gun Half-Life The Gluon Gun, or Quantum Destabilizer, is an experimental weapon which fires a glowing beam of energy capable of vaporizing mostly everything it hits. The gun consists of a handheld beam emitter attached by a thick cable to a backpack mounted unit. This weapon interferes with the fundamental interactions of matter, and the stresses caused by this reaction can blast any living creature to pieces. The glow-on gun is useful against Zen creatures that cannot be damaged with bullets, as the beam fires continuously, scoring multiple hits while striking through armor. The name of the gun is derived from glow-on, which is the exchange particle of the strong force in physics. The Fusion Cannon, Turok 64. Turok has a notoriety for stunningly powerful weapons. None so far have been beaten by the sheer power of the Fusion Cannon. The Fusion Cannon is one of the most powerful weapons in the game behind the Chrono Scepter. The weapon can prove to be of use against the tougher enemies, and can take down large groups of enemies with ease. Although it is slow to use, as it takes about two seconds to warm up and fire, the Fusion Ball will only travel a short distance before detonating, so the player must get to a safe distance quickly otherwise. If the player is caught in the blast radius, results are fatal. The weapon is greatly recommended against the T-Rex boss, as one blast can take up to a third of its life bar. Lastly, the Fusion Cannon uses its own ammo pool and holds up to two charges or three if the player has the backpack power-up. The weapon's scarce ammo means most players save it for the battle with Thunder and have little use for it elsewhere. Unmaker from Doom 64 The Unmaker is a weapon in Doom 64 of demonic origin inscribed with a pentagram and made of parts of the spine and rib bones of a demon. It fires powerful red lasers by consuming cells as ammo. The Unmaker is the only new weapon in Doom 64. It begins as the second strongest weapon behind the BFG 9000 with slightly better damage by the slow firing rate than the plasma gun. It is especially rare and can only be found in a few levels. However, Amongst demon weaponry, the Unmaker can be upgraded by finding the three mysterious and well-protected demon key artifacts. The fully equipped Unmaker critically increases the chance of pain stun dispatching the Cyber Demon and even the mighty Mother Demon with impunity. While the BFG can dole out higher damage and stroke more targets at a single time, the Unmaker arguably surpasses it in unity in the late game when at full strength. The Unmaker has its origins in the Doom Bible and was originally intended to be in Doom itself. Super Baller, destroy all humans, Path of the Furon. The Super Baller is a gun that allows the player to fire bouncy rainbow disco balls at vehicles, bystanders, and enemies. It tangles them up and then bounces them around the level, damaging them as it goes. It's used very much like the Dislocator weapon, where ammo regenerates itself and looks incredibly funny when there are more than one of the objects bouncing around the area. The Super Baller is the second newest gun to be found in the Destroy All Humans series, after the Black Hole Gun. There's also an achievement and a trophy for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions, where the player must use the weapon to bounce enemies 100 times. Lightning Gun Quake The Lightning Gun fires a steady stream of electricity. It can do incredible damage if it stays on a target. If the Lightning Gun is used in water, the gun will fire all of its ammo out at once and cause all the enemies, including the player within sight, both in and near the water, to explode. The Lightning Gun is the most effective weapon in the game. It's so powerful that it can destroy a Shabbler in two seconds, making it just as useful as the Super Nail Gun. Its only downside is that its ammo is somewhat rare, so it's recommended to use the gun only against dangerous enemies. The Chicago Typewriter, Resident Evil 4. 
The Chicago Typewriter is a special unlockable weapon in Resident Evil 4. The Chicago Typewriter must be unlocked before it can be used anywhere in game. Beating separate ways will unlock this gun for the main game for 1 million points. The Chicago Typewriter has unlimited ammo right after you buy it. A typical Ganado will die from one or two shots from the typewriter, and entire crowds will fall in seconds. The stats depict the weapon as having fully upgraded stats, evident by the yellow bars. This may suggest it was originally planned to be a normal weapon in the main game, as the description also states it as a 45 caliber weapon, suggesting what type of ammo it could have been used. The Lightning Arc Weapon Fear, Perseus Mandate. The LP4 Lightning Arc Weapon is one of the most powerful weapons in the game, as one shot can instantly kill most enemies, from humans to replica forces to supernatural enemies. The shots seek enemies, which means the player doesn't really need to aim it accurately. Like a shotgun, the player will score a hit by pointing the weapon to the general direction of the enemy. The only real drawback of the gun is the low rate of fire and the small 8-charge magazine. Ammo is very rarely found, and very few enemies carry this weapon. Although, when they do, the sergeant must be very careful, as they do a lot of damage and the beams always hit. It's also worth noting that the lightning arc weapon is self-illuminated, so it can be used somewhat as a flashlight in small areas, such as corridors and air vents. The Plasma Cutter Dead Space The Plasma Cutter delivers a cohesive pulse stream, or bolt, of ionized plasma when fired. It is capable of firing bolts both vertically and horizontally. The Plasma Cutter is very accurate, utilizing three blue lasers to indicate the desired cutting plane. On impact with the target, the bolt penetrates it with a focused jet of superheated matter. This causes intense localized shear effects, as well as a tunneling thermal expansion. When used upon brittle, pliable targets, however, impact will cause minimal damage, and thermal expansion will not so much cut as stress the area around the impact site, sometimes requiring several consecutive hits with the non-upgraded tool. Still, when presented with a less than effective alternative against dense organic matter, the 211V Plasma Cutter retains its utility. The Laser Craftwork Wolfenstein The New Order This weapon has two functions. One acts similarly to the laser cutter. Another acts as a pure laser weapon that can harm enemies. The energy attacks from the heavy robotic enemies act as EMPs and drain the battery from this weapon, making it useless unless BJ recharges the weapon again. You can press the ALT key and the laser craft work will change function. Both laser cutter and laser rifle function can cut shackles, but the latter will attract attention from the enemy. The weapon will become more and more useful after the upgrades are found throughout the game. The laser craftwork may look clumsy, but it is an effective range backup weapon once the player runs short on ammo for the other weapons. The laser craftwork has 400 battery units, and once the battery has less than 60 units, the weapon will recharge itself to 60, giving the player one or two more shots. After the generator upgrade is found, the weapon will recharge itself slowly, and this is useful. However, finding a power station is generally a better idea than relying on this. Super Shotgun from Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil The Super Shotgun from Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil is a replica of the Super Shotgun from Doom 2 Hell on Earth. The Super Shotgun cannot be found in Doom 3 but in its expansion pack and Lost Mission. The Super Shotgun of Resurrection of Evil looks a lot like the classic Super Shotgun. It's extremely powerful, firing both barrels at once, instantly killing most monsters at close range and severely wounding more powerful monsters. Reloads are rather quick, but its low ammo capacity and single shot can prove slow in a crowd of monsters. The Super Shotgun is particularly more powerful than its classic counterpart as it can kill any enemy up to a revenant in one body shot or two, provided that all pellets connect, 
and even kill an arch foul in one headshot if the player is skilled enough. The differences between the super shotgun and the regular one are mainly that the super shotgun is more effective and can cause much more damage. Another significant difference is that it only holds two shells at one time. It uses the same kind of ammunition as the shotgun but unlike its classic Doom predecessor, it's far more accurate than the regular shotgun. The Microwave Pulse Gun, Soldier of Fortune. The MPG appears as a grayer version of Valve's gravity gun, showing a blue round meter on the screen. It also has a claw that appears at the front, with the claws bearing a white bluish bolt. The gun feeds off of batteries from where it uses its ammo. It has two types of firing modes. The primary attack is a continuous beam of microwave energy, which incinerates the target and burns them as well. The secondary attack is a charged blast, which fires a charged up bolt, and when it hits the target, it violently shakes their internal particles and blows them into wonderful pieces of gore. But this uses a chunk of the MPG's total battery life, and thus makes it a little bit impractical, though it's incredibly awesome. Farsight XR20 Perfect Dark 64 The Farsight XR20 is a powerful railgun that can fire through walls or other obstacles. It's the most powerful gun in the game and will kill any enemy with one shot, regardless of any modifiers. The primary mode is aimed manually. Like the sniper rifle, the C buttons are used to zoom in and out. The X-ray sight means the user can see and fire through walls for targets. The secondary mode actively seeks out and tracks targets while aiming. However, it does this slowly and can be outrun. When this weapon was attained in multiplayer, they were usually the one who dominated the whole match. This gun is almost considered cheap, seeing as how you can't really dodge it or even see where the shooter is located. This gun also made its debut in Timesplitter's Future Perfect. The Stoker Concussion Rifle, Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2. The Stoker Concussion Rifle made its first appearance in Dark Forces 1, but also appeared in the sequel, Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2, and then was left out in the sequel, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, and then brought back for Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. In its primary fire mode, the concussion rifle fires concussion blasts that explode on contact, dealing damage to anything within 4 meters of the explosion. The secondary fire mode is less powerful than primary fire, but knocks down the target, at the expense of some minor recoil to the user. The damage is also far more concentrated with primary fire. The downside of this gun is that it would kill the player when fired at close ranges, but not when using secondary fire, as that had no splash damage. And in the first game it was introduced in, it had a mysterious trajectory that made it useless for shooting enemies above the player. However, in all subsequent appearances, you could freely aim it, and it would be accurate as such. The Dubstep Gun, Saints Row 4. The dubstep gun is a very unique and powerful weapon. It will fire long-range pulses of energy to the beat of an electronic song, the song being determined by the costume selected for the gun. It has no ammo reserve, instead relying on a charge percentage that will regenerate over time. It also needs to charge up briefly before it can drop the base. Each costume for the dubstep gun changes the song, in addition to the weapon's model. Unlike other weapons, the change is more than purely being cosmetic, as the rhythm and beat of the song determines the rate of fire and intensity of the shots. Venom Gun, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. The Venom Gun is a multi-barreled weapon similar to today's minigun. It's the fastest firing weapon in the game. 
The Venom gun, being a minigun, is highly inaccurate beyond short range. Coupled with the increased recoil when firing full auto, it is highly inadvisable to use this weapon for further targets. However, the weapon excels in close range combat far better than any other weapon. Its deadly hail of bullets can quickly turn most enemies into bloody pulp in a matter of seconds. The Venom gun, along with his spin, is the only weapon to overheat when fired for extended periods. A red bar will appear near the ammo counter when firing and once it fills, the weapon overheats and must cool down for some time, rendering the player vulnerable to enemies. The Venom's gun rate of fire is 2,000 rounds per minute and can also be used in online multiplayer matches. However, due to the excessive overpoweredness, the host will usually ban anyone who uses it. The Incineration Cannon, Halo 4 The Incineration Cannon is a usable Promethean Forerunner weapon that appears in Halo 4. The Incineration Cannon fires five streams of explosive particles in a tight spread, which release in four different directions upon detonation. The explosive particles then detonate again individually, increasing the effective radius of the initial explosion. Because there are multiple explosive particles, it is very easy to kill multiple players in a single shot. The unfortunate downside of the gun is the fact that the incineration cannon has only one shot per clip, and reloading takes four seconds, which makes missing a shot very punishing. Also, the weapon's large area of effective splash damage makes it incredibly easy to kill oneself in close quarters. Singularity Generator Blood 2 The Chosen The Singularity Generator is an energy weapon found in Blood 2 The Chosen and is considered to be the BFG of the game. It projects a purple laser beam, and when that laser makes contact with a solid object, such as a wall or person, a purple vortex opens up, pulling objects in the vicinity into itself and causing massive damage. Like most BFGs, it uses large quantities of ammo and takes a long time to fire. Also, if a vortex is already open, the weapon cannot be fired again until that vortex closes. The gun serves as a major plot device as interdimensional technology, and is part responsible for the invasion of reality beta, and that is involved in the resurrection of the Chosen. Surge Gun, Time Shift. This massive energy cannon is by far the most powerful weapon in Time Shift's arsenal. It's the weapon used by the Warp Guards, the game's toughest enemies, and won't be available to players until the last quarter of the game. The Surge Gun's primary fire launches a very large energy ball that travels at medium speed and explodes on contact. Very powerful, the blast has good splash damage and will give any enemy in the game except for the Warp Guards with a single hit. The secondary fire is a huge lightning-like continuous energy beam that does massive concussive damage and will give anything it touches in a split second. The beam even has splash damage, causing damage to enemies standing near the point of impact. The beam lasts for as long as the trigger is held down. The only downside is that the surge gun uses an energy battery instead of conventional ammo. So unlike every other weapon in the game, the surge gun cannot be refilled at ammo crates, only by the player picking up other surge guns. Devastator, Duke Nukem. The Devastator is a gyrojet-type weapon found throughout most games in the franchise. It's a rapid-fire rocket launcher weapon fed from overhead pan magazines, which spits out small incendiary rockets at an impressive rate of fire like a machine gun. The accuracy becomes less effective at longer ranges. The Devastator is immediately recognized by its dual-wielded appearance, unlike any other weapon in the game. The Devastator is an excellent choice for clearing out large groups of enemies. The gun fires fast enough, and each rocket does enough damage that it can carve through a large group in a matter of seconds. The Devastator, except for the small amount of ammo, doesn't really have any huge weaknesses. 
It can kill weaker assault troopers or captains to more dangerous enemies like such as assault commanders and protector drones, and even MIDI battle lords. Devil Horns, Dead Space 3. The Devil Horns appear in Dead Space 3 as the most powerful weapon in the game, similar to the hand cannon in Dead Space 2. It's generally considered a one-shot kill weapon, with the main function being bang and the alt fire being pew pew. When reloading, Isaac will perform a rocking out animation, and a metal guitar riff will play. To unlock the Devil Horns, you must first beat the main campaign, then play the game over again with the new game plus mode, but have the difficulty set to classic. The weapon is modifiable, with the option to add or drop the alt fire to it, and can add circuits to the tools if unlocked with tungsten. This serves very little purpose, since the stats are already very high. One Shot, Gears of War 3. The One Shot is a supercharged sniper rifle, and as the name suggests, all you really need is one shot. This recoilless rifle is a real elephant of a weapon, as it weighs a ton, slowing the trooper carrying it down to a crawling speed. But once it finds a target, odds are they're going home in lots of little plastic bags. The One Shot fires single shot rounds and takes a decade to reload. But once ready, the high-speed round will vaporize its target. If there is an enemy behind the target, it will travel through them as well, filling the scope view with a cloud of red mist. The one-shot is a great scouting weapon, much like the mortar, in that it forces the opponents to take cover to avoid being blasted. It is also effective at pushing a frightened opponent directly into an ally's weapon while fleeing from the laser designator. Rhino from Ratchet & Clank The Rip You A New One abbreviated Rhino is a devastatingly powerful auto-targeting missile launcher that is extremely rare and expensive. It fires 6 missiles simultaneously which immediately saw and destroy their targets. It also has a moderate rate of fire despite its size and calibre. In size matters, the Rhino functions slightly differently. It fires 6 separate rockets as opposed to 9 from the original model. The Size Matters Rhino has a higher rate of fire than Gadgetron's first Rhino seemingly cancelling out the difference. The Rhino can only be bought in the game's challenge mode and is by far the most expensive item in the game. Tool Gun! Gary's mine! Okay yeah, technically it's not officially a gun from a video game. But it still deserves a mention, because of how unique, helpful, and just creative it is. The tool gun is an important piece of Gary's mod. It allows players to manipulate a variety of functions to create different things. The gun itself looks like a revolver with lots of technical wiring and a screen on the back, displaying the tool being used. The model is seen for any option and task that the player selects from the model select screen. When fired, it lets out a beam of light or static electricity at whatever you point it at. There are many things you can do with the tool gun. For example, you can change a character's facial animation, inflate or shrink certain parts of their body, add a rope or weld objects together, or add cameras or lights to a scene you're making. The possibilities are endless. The Dark Matter Gun, Quake 4 The Dark Matter Gun is a very powerful weapon that fires balls of dark matter that can kill most enemies in one hit, and the more stronger enemies in two hits. It can also deal large amounts of damage against bosses. When fired, the Dark Matter Ball slowly travels through the air until it hits a wall. Most enemies will be sucked into the small black hole and killed off whilst larger enemies will take a second shot to kill. On contact with the wall, the dark matter will explode, dealing damage to nearby enemies caught in the blast radius. 
The Dark Matter gun is the opposite of the BFG-10K from Quake 2, as the BFG-10K destroys everything from its path. The Dark Matter gun sucks everything and explodes when it comes into impact. Peacemaker, Jack 2. The Peacemaker is the first Dark Mod Morph gun weapon and specializes in high grade mass destruction. The Peacemaker is built on a basic morph gun frame with metal head skull mounted on the barrel of the gun. It can be charged by holding button R1, which will reduce an electric dark ecosphere. Releasing the button will release the sphere as it will travel to a target. If multiple targets are in the same vicinity, the blast will arc over and destroy the nearby targets as well. The Peacemaker is the most powerful of the four tier 1 mods and can be considered a last resort type weapon. Any medium sized enemy will be killed in a single hit from the Peacemaker. It's more effective at long range due to the slow auto seeking effect of the bolt, making it even possible to fire the weapon without facing the intended targets. The sole downside to the Peacemaker is the lack of ammunition and the fact that it's oddly ineffective against well armored opponents and those with large amounts of health. Our own Peacemaker! Now we're rocking! The IP-36 Nuclear Rocket Launcher Sin Wages of Sin The IP-36 is the ultimate weapon in the game. It blasts enemies with a powerful explosion, capable of taking out multiple foes and vehicles. The nuclear rocket launcher is found rather late into the game. The main two weaknesses to the IP-36 nuclear rocket launcher is that it has very little ammo and that it takes a few seconds before the gun is ready to fire, proving to be fatal in firefights. Fat Man, Fallout 3. The Fat Man is a pre-war heavy weapon that launches mini-nukes. The mini-nuke projectile is very heavy and is simply fired straight forward. It will travel only a short distance before falling to the ground and detonating. For optimal range, the Fat Man should be fired in bats mode, at high skill levels, or at an upward angle uh, to catapult the mini-nuke further so that it impacts at a much, much safer distance. The Fat Man has an estimated range of about 150 yards. The blast zone will be irradiated for a short time after detonation, giving about 5 rads per second. Because of this relation to real historic events, the weapon has been renamed to the Nuka Launcher in the Japanese version of Fallout 3. Thermobaric Boomstick Prototype 2 the Thermobaric Boomstick is a Black Watch weapon based on a rocket launcher's design but capable of mass destruction. The explosion is similar to that of a Thermobaric missile launched by a Thermobaric tank. The explosion first causes a large vacuum and pulls everything around it into an epicenter, then a cloud of rapid expanding gas pushes everything away. The after effect of the fireballs is most likely debris. The Boomstick suddenly disappears when dropped and cannot be picked up again. The Thermobaric Boomstick is available on pre-order of the Black Watch Collector's Edition of Prototype 2. It is also available in the downloadable content, Colossal Mayhem Pack. Meteor Gun. Destroy All Humans 2. Now calling it a gun can be debatable, as it is more like calling in an airstrike than firing it from a gun. But looking at its power, it is impossible to rule it out of the list. Although the weapon is extremely powerful, it can only hold a max of 5 pieces of ammo and requires a targeting time. The Meteor Strike summons a small meteor to Earth, wiping out teams of enemies at a time. At further levels it summons 3 meteors and a small planetoid. This is the only weapon in the series that allows Crypto to destroy buildings on foot. Enemies often waste time looking at the meteor. When they try to run away, it is a sure sign that the meteor is 2 seconds from hitting. When firing the meteor strike, it is advised to leave the area, as it will create a massive explosion. Tack 
Gun Crisis. The TAC Gun is a prototype handheld nuclear weapon developed by the US Navy to be used in conjunction with a nano suit. In the single player campaign, the TAC Cannon is used exclusively for killing the final boss. You aren't even allowed to fire it at anything else. Basically, the TAC Cannon is a tactical nuclear cannon that fires a small guided nuclear shell and is loaded with at least three shots. The TAC Cannon needs to lock onto a target before firing, and it takes 3.5 seconds for the cannon to do so. On the plus side, once the target is locked, you can fire and forget since the shell is computer guided. Genocide Gun, Earth Defense Force, 2017. The Genocide Gun is the ultimate weapon in Earth Defense Force 2017, but is also by far the most difficult weapon to unlock. It is unlocked by beating all 53 levels on the hardest difficulty, Inferno. The gun has a 75 meter blast range and does 1 million damage. The reload time is surprisingly quick and the power is devastating. The Genocide Gun will effectively destroy any alien unit except the drop carrier ships. While this gun is extremely efficient at eliminating the aliens, it will take out the EDF soldiers just as fast. This is why it's of the utmost importance to use this weapon with great care, and to make sure that players are always outside of the blast radius before firing. Pesticide Gun Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon An Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon there are four secret pesticide weapons, one for each armor. All pesticide weapons do 500,000 points of damage, and with a 150 meter radius. Essentially, whatever is caught in the blast is killed instantly, except for certain boss elites on Inferno difficulty. And you, and your teammates. This is why one must exercise great care when using any of the pesticide weapons. Most of them take quite a while to reload, up to 15 seconds, and there is no active reload for these weapons. Each armor unlocks their pesticide weapon once they reach tier 8. There are four variants of the pesticide gun for four different classes. Pesticide mortar, pesticide rifle, pesticide missile, and pesticide cannon. The pesticide guns are most likely an homage to the genocide gun in Earth Defense Force 2017. Redeemer, Unreal Tournament 3. This weapon still strikes terror into the hearts of gamers everywhere today. A rocket launcher that launched nukes. Primary fire launched a slow-moving messenger of death in a straight line. While the secondary fire launched it and allowed players to control it. Controlling the Redeemer was always a complicated task. The camera would switch to the missile's perspective and you'd have to wind it around corners to reach a target. But don't get me wrong, it's not that the task is impossible, it's just hard. The Redeemer's rocket is one of the slowest projectiles in the game, so it's usually far more effective the closer you get to the target. Launch a Redeemer and escape in a fast moving vehicle or on a hoverboard. The Redeemer is a weapon rarely used in deathmatch levels. Where it is used, timing is whenever the weapon is next available, and picking it up before anybody else is the only viable tactic. Many servers choose to replace the Redeemer with a rocket launcher in their maps because of the sheer amount of power a single team could wield, and that the leading team usually will have exclusive access to the Redeemer, making comebacks incredibly difficult. SBC Cannon from Sirius Sam HD the SBC cannon fires a high-powered projectile of extreme piercing capabilities. This makes it very useful for taking down very powerful enemies with a single cannonball. The SBC cannon functions identically in virtually all its appearances. It can attain various levels of power and speed depending on how long it's charged. Low power shots are still capable of piercing through in multiple enemies and dealing with heavy damage to stronger ones. An uncharged shot will instantly kill almost all weaker enemies and so is particularly effective against Syrian werebulls or clear skeletons as a last resort. 
A fully charged shot will virtually kill any enemy in the game bar bosses and is useful in quickly disposing of highly threatening enemies such as biomechanoid mages or fiending reptilia demons with a great range. Golden Gun GoldenEye 64 People loved the Golden Gun because it gave even the lesser players a chance to succeed while still being a fairly balanced weapon. Killing in one shot, the Golden Gun was the perfect piece to top off the well-rounded list of weaponry in GoldenEye, which to this day has proven to be a captivating multiplayer experience for those who remember it. The thing that allows this weapon to make the list though is the sheer memories it has embedded into those who are stuck at home with a bunch of friends playing Goldeneye for hours on end, and the intense fun and hilarity the gun was in single player missions once the cheats were enabled. The BFG-10K Quake 2 the BFG-10K is the most powerful weapon in Quake 2. When fired, it releases a large green sphere of compacted energy that travels forward until it hits a wall or other obstacle. As it's traveling, it will exert its excess energy out in the form of green beams that lash out at the enemies near it, usually killing them quickly. When it hits something, the sphere will explode, taking out any enemy that is within range. The gun is similar to the iconic BFG-9000 from the Doom series. Its only downfalls are that it uses 50 cells per shot, and it will take a while for it to fire and reload. Portal Gun Portal The Portal Gun, or handheld portal device, is designed to create and place portals on any white surface that is immobile, flat, and large enough. When the device is fired, a colored projectile will be emitted from the barrel. If the projectile strikes a valid surface, a portal of the corresponding color will be formed. If a portal of any other color is already placed, these two portals will be linked. If a portal of the same color is already placed, it will be closed and a new one will be used instead limiting the player to the use of only two portals at a time. Nothing will happen if a portal is shot at an enemy or any other object. The portal gun also has the ability to pick up and manipulate objects directly in front of it or in the same manner as the gravity gun from the Half-Life series. Cerebral Boar, Turok 2, Seeds of Evil the Cerebel Boar is a weapon first featured in Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. It is a weapon of alien origin that consists of a homing projectile capable of latching onto victims' heads, killing them by drilling into their skulls and exploding. The Cerebral Boar appears as a strange gray circular device. It fires bores that are stored within its rotating ammo mechanism. It appears to be made of iron and has blue lights visible on its side. The bores appear as strange golden spheres with several small hook-like protrusions, a drill head, and a deadly explosive charge. To be fired, the weapon must be locked on target, which can prove to be difficult against mobile enemies, especially raptors. It is recommended to use at a distance or for a sneak attack. Given its maximum range, even sneak attacks can prove to be difficult with this weapon, as the player cannot be too far from an enemy, otherwise the cerebral bore will not detect them. It has gained a reputation amongst fans, gamers, and reviewers alike, most of them considering it to be one of the most gruesome weapons in the history of gaming. Truly an awe-inspiring effect, it was perfectly rendered, even on the primitive Nintendo 64 hardware, and therefore has earned this place. Railgun Quake 3 the Railgun was the ultimate skill-based player's dream. Any way you look at it, this gun was a simple charge and shoot. The tweak was, players could choose a rail color for the gun, but wherever players put the crosshair was exactly where the particle trail would go. 
The railgun is a weapon that fires a powerful high caliber round that has the potential to kill an unarmed target at full health in one hit. The railgun fires highly accelerated hot uranium slugs which will pierce through flesh with ease. There is a significant delay between shots, which is indicated by a part of the railgun turning purple between shots and sounding a recharging noise. When that part is white, it can be fired again. It should be used as the equivalent of a sniper rifle. Using the mouse wheel to zoom, although it has no optics or sights of any kind on the weapon. Gravity Gun Half-Life 2 The Gravity Gun, or the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator changed gaming. No doubt about that. Half-Life 2's awesome physics engine showed the world that games weren't about static level design and canned death animations anymore, and the Gravity Gun was the tool which the game proved its point. The weapon can attract objects closer to the player, pick them up, set them back down, or launch them at your enemies. On a plus point, it's handy to draw health and ammunition close to the player from inaccessible places with this gun. The gravity gun can also fire a blast of energy, which punts the targeted object with tremendous force. This is useful for clearing out barriers and moving heavy objects. The gun is powered from what seems to be a zen crystal in a vacuum chamber, giving the device its unique gravity bending properties. The BFG-9000 from the Doom series. The BFG-9000 is one of the weapons created by the Union Aerospace Corporation under its weapon research program and is considered the most powerful weapon in the Doom series, capable of causing damage to a single enemy for more than 1,700 hit points. It causes major damage to opponents hit by the radiation emitted by the projectile, which can clear entire rooms of foes, and is often an instant kill if a target takes a direct hit on the projectile. The player is unaffected by the splash damage, but makes it possible to use the BFG-9000 safely in close quarters, unlike some of the other powerful weapons. It's also unique for its creativity pick name. Rumored to stand for the big something or other gun, it's raised a white smile for many video game fans across the land. In Doom 3, it was altered slightly in terms of appearance and handling, causing the gun to blow up as if it was charged for too long but the original BFG-9000 is still and easily one of the most iconic weapons of the Doom series and claims to be the best video game gun in history.